Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala syarafil anbiya Ibn Rusalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Alhamdulillah In the previous video I have explained to you In some uh, detail About how we are going to create an assessment uh, For Our domains in terms of our SEMP, spiritual, emotional, mental And physical uh, Domains eh, that we are going to talk about But when we talk about the nature of our existence From the perspective of our spiritual, uh, emotional, mental uh, It is difficult to quantify Naturally we can quantify in terms of our physical existence That's why in the secular materialistic world We only consider our physical existence We, we consider our brain Because this is the brain here but we don't consider our mind But now because of the latest research in scientific studies Now they understand the nature of the mind So that's why you have this mindfulness based therapies Which is very very effective Alhamdulillah But again at a higher level of the cult within the Islamic institution And the understanding of the roh, the spirit This is something that we have to tr be transcendental uh, Transcendent that means we are beyond the, just the material world And if we want to define our, for example, our mindfulness quotient Or our uh, EQ, which is more than our emotional quotient But this is the intuitive heart quotient, we call it EQ also Or the SQ, spiritual quotient Then our definition of the uh, kind of questionnaire To measure, for example, our spirituality or our uh, our heart, intuitive heart Or our mindfulness It is quite subjective And now there are measures There are questionnaires that are bringing about This kind of understanding Which I want to just give you some ideas We just go through some of them But they are doing research on it So basically there will be a convergence eh? Maybe there will be this uh, Christian based idea of spirituality We have the Buddhist based idea of spirituality We have the Hindu based Idea of spirituality We have the new age Idea of spirituality All coming to this idea Some stop at mindfulness They don't want to define beyond the mind Some goes to the ex extent of the intuitive heart Now it's a very big research now In terms of the intuitive heart Alright, the cult and the spirit So our model, the Islamic model Based on Al-Ghazali model We have these four rims of existence Which are interconnected Especially the three rim eh? That means from the rim of Azali, we are endowed with the roh. When Allah blew His Spirit unto us, this roh become part of us in our physical world. But our innate nature is the roh, the kalb, and the akal. They are functionally they are as the same thing, but being given different rim because of our functionality, which I'm trying to give you. Eh? Remember, it is a total package. Eh? You cannot split any one from the other. So the same thing, if we talk about the physical uh, thing that we want to do Say we want to measure what is the physical uh, domains If we want to measure, there are many areas of uh, measuring the domain of our physical rim So uh, I've given you some example and I can give you some more example For example, you talk about, alright, uh, say your nature of your general health, alright, on outcome eh? This is a book by uh, Robert, Robert Cooper and Ayman Sh Sh Shawaf on EQ all right? And physical, we have the physical symptom Whether you have, for example, back pain Whether you have weight problem, you have migraine and so on uh, Cold or whatever it is Then you have behavioral symptom Whether you have eating problem, smoking, drinking All these are questionnaires that you can create all right? And then you're talking about emotional symptom uh, trouble concentrating in work, overwhelmed by work, being uh, being easily distracted, can't get things off your mind, uh, feeling depressed, dejected, hopeless. So there are the when you tick tick tick, you tick whether it is always, sometimes, or uh, none. Eh? So that's where you have to do that. Then from the physical aspect, also you can have the scale of the quality of life. All right, what is your scale in terms of quality of life? For example. I'm deeply satisfied with my life I feel energetic, happy and healthy I feel, I have a feelings of inner peace and well-being So you tick, alright I would need to make 
lots of changes in my life to be truly happy and so on. So these are scale developed by uh, various people, especially this, it is developed for EQ, executive EQ. But there are many other scales uh, in terms of this physical aspect where they can combine and then they can give you a certain idea. The same thing like the psychological assessment, the clinical psychology assessment will have their own scale and have given you the uh, typical scale that is being used and also those available now online. All right, so this is quantifiable. But what about the mindfulness aspect? For example, detached observation, holistic IQ, transcendental awareness, have its self meaning, uh, natural, uh, naturalizing, uh, naturalizing uh, intelligence, naturalized intelligence about nature. So there are some. All right, for example, uh, if we can take this about. About mindfulness. For example, there is this Ohio University mindfulness, mindfulness questionnaire. Eh? All right. So the questionnaire is this is the questionnaire. All right. So we do that. Uh, this mindfulness questionnaire. They have never or rarely uh, true, really rarely true, sometimes true, often true, very often true, or always true. For example, question number one. When I'm walking, I deeply notice the sensation of my body moving. All right. Num question number two, I'm good at finding words to describe my feelings. Question number three, I criticize myself for having irrational or inappropriate emotion. Uh, question number four, I perceive my feelings and emotion without having to react to them. All right. Question number five, when I take a shower, I stay alert to the sensation of the water on my body. Question number seven, I can easily put my beliefs, opinion, and expectation into words. Question number eight, I don't pay attention to what I'm doing because I am daydreaming, worrying, or otherwise distracted. Question number nine, I watch my feelings without getting lost in them. Question number ten, I tell myself I shouldn't be feeling the way I'm feeling. Question number eleven, I notice how food and drinks affect my thoughts, bodily sensation, and emotions. Question number twelve, it is hard for me to find the words to describe what I'm thinking. Question number 13, I'm easily distracted. Question number 14, I believe some of my thoughts are abnormal or bad and I shouldn't think that way. Question number 15, I pay attention to sensations such as the wind in my hair or the sun on my face. And then question number 16, I have trouble thinking of the right words to express how I feel about things. Question number 17, I make judgment about whether my thoughts are good or bad. And then question number 18, I find it difficult to focus on what's happening in the present. Eh? So based on some of this whole range of questionnaires, which I'm giving it to you, it leads you to about the understanding of this, the nature or the score in terms of your mindfulness quotient. Eh? All right, so this is where some research are being done. About the whole thing about the heart base, eh? there's a lot of research on the heart base and also the spiritual base also. So there are some questionnaires. For example, if we can take about, uh, there is this measure in terms of mature religio religiosity scale, eh? MRS. This is one research being done. Okay. So what are the questions in terms of the questionnaire? I have the idea that I entrust myself more and more to God. So that's the first question. Second question. My religion supports my sense of self-esteem and identity. Number three, knowing God's love is fundamental to my life. Number four, the meaning and significance of my life is, is, is in my relationship with God. Number four, the experience of God in my life motivates me to decide to, for, uh, f uh, to, decide to do good or even if, even if it is difficult. Number five, I believe sincerely, not mainly out of obligation or fear. Number seven, in times of trial and tribulation, I trust in God. Eight, I am willing to be accountable to God and my fellow human beings about my way of life. Nine, my faith is orientated towards values that transcend the physical and social need. Ten, out of my sense that God loves human beings, I pursue to love my fellow men. Then, my faith influences all areas of my life. The next one is the development of my personality and my faith influence others mutually. Then, as I am a person, I am only fully complete in my relationship with God. Next one, for me, praying for and doing justice belongs together inextricably. Next one, I pursue higher values such as love, truth, and justice. 
And next one, my sense of self-esteem is connected to who I am and not so much of what I have. Alright, so basically these are some idea about maturing the religiosity. But this is not the level of the spiritual aspect uh, in terms of shuhud, spiritual visualization uh, or spiritual division of, uh, of the understanding the nature of truth. Alright, connecting with God, yes, there's some here knowing our role as a caliph of Allah, we have to develop as a Muslim because this scale are developed maybe for the Christians or for the Buddhists or for Hindus, whatever religion they have, they have developed this kind of uh, measure, scale. So you can see that when we have this model, all right, our domains of SEMP integration eh, will cover all the areas of the physical aspect which we can extract from the existing domains that is being used in all psychological tested, testing, also in terms of our neurological function, the brain, body interaction it's perfectly acceptable to us the next level we go to the mindfulness the next level we go to the heart intuitive heart in terms of compassion love forgiveness personal interpersonal which is covered in both eh? both the eq and the sq aspect they are actually interlinked so some will cover here some will cover here but there are many many studies now being done for muslims we are going to develop our skill inshallah so once we have the resources we have our uh, researchers in the universities who maybe be doing their PhD then they, uh, they develop the scale and then they can then statistically test this among Muslims to see how effective it is in terms of our levels of the domain of our physical existence our akal, uh, that means the jasad the akal which is the brain and the mind the kalp which is the physical heart and the intuitive heart and then the roh or the spirit which is the intrinsic nature of our existence so from all this we can see that basically there is a way forward I'm giving you suggestions to for you to understand that this is a beautiful approach in which those of you interested in positive stomach cognitive behavior therapy can then develop the model based on this model or maybe you can create a better model and then use all the clinical assessment technique Plus, the other techniques is beyond clinical because we are talking about the mind, we are talking about the raw, we are talking about the cult, which is subjective but still can be quantified in a way that is good, that is acceptable and that can actually help us to bring a holistic nature of our existence on this earth and to be able to tell this idea of this spiritual, emotional, mental and physical integration to be a holistic human being to be a happy human being, to be a peaceful human being, to receive the grace, the mercy, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we lead a good life. So Allah has ordained upon that we create heaven on earth. And how can we create heaven on earth if we are just focusing only on the material things, or only on the nafs of the amara, of the world, of the dunya, of just physical things, uh, car, uh, you know, expensive car, private jets, or private yacht but not looking at the intrinsic nature that is permanent because this dunya in terms of our jasad is just temporary maybe we live for 60, 70, 80, 100 years very few go beyond 100 but this aspect will last forever and ever and ever in the realm of akhirah uh, which Allah has ordained upon beyond space, beyond time so our duty is to lead a life to go through this test of life Achieving the best, being the Caliph of Allah, striving to make ourselves good, helping others to be good, making the world good, inshallah.